Economic Fail and we're in Baxter's Place at the top of Leith Walk, Edinburgh. Behind me are a row of stone houses. Today it's a hotel, but in one of those houses lived Robert Stevenson Sr. and his family. And he was a civil engineer who built lighthouses. He and his descendants built a large number of lighthouses around the Scottish coast. house, home of the Balfour family in 1777. Robert Louis Stevenson's grandfather was born here. So lucky to have in the family a tree of the Balfours of Pilrig. James down to James down to John down to Lewis's grandfather Lewis Balfour whom he loved and called Gatty and to his daughter, Margaret Isabella Balfour, who had her only son, Robert. Pilrick House, a traditional laird's house in the 1600s, and then when bought by the Balfours in the 1700s, this beautiful house was bought by Robert Louis Stevenson's grandfather, and embellished beautifully. And then again in the 1980s, it was bought again and is now a house that does have self-catering apartments in. Robert Louis Stevenson would have played in the grounds round about the house, as it's not far from his home in Heriot Row, and also not far from the port of Leith with all these boats coming in and going all over the world. This pretty Georgian terrace on the northern edge of Edinburgh's new town is about a mile only from the bustling city centre and Prince's Street. And although today it's a very busy road, in the 19th century it was a quiet suburb. And it was here, on this terrace, number 8 Howard Place, that Robert Louis Stevenson was born in November 1850. The young Robert lived here with his parents until he was about seven, and then they moved up the hill towards the centre of town to much grander new town accommodation. I'm in the heart of Edinburgh's new town, standing outside 17 Harriet Row, which was the Stevenson family home and where Robert lived for over 20 years. He was a very sickly boy and he spent a lot of time at home in his bedroom. Now, one of the things he looked forward to was at dusk when the lamplighter came along the street. Leary uh, would come along the street to light the lamps. And when he lit the lamp here, he would give a cheery wave to young Robert. My tea is nearly ready and the sun has left the sky. It's time to take the window to see Leary going by. For every night at tea time, and before you take your seat, with lantern and with ladder he comes posting up the street. Now Tom would be a driver and Maria go to sea. And my papa's a banker and as rich as he can be. But I, when I am stronger, and can choose what I'm to do. Well, Leary, I'll go round at night and light the lamps with you. For we are very lucky with a lamp before the door, and Leary stops to light it as he lights so many more. And oh, before you hurry by with ladder and with light, oh, Leary, see a little child and nod to him tonight. Behind me is a little house 
where the lady who was probably the most instrumental in the education of Robert Louis Stevenson as a child spent her earlier part of her retirement. Her name was Alison Cunningham. He referred to her as Tummy. And he dedicated his child's garden of verses to her. He wrote, My second mother, my first wife, the angel of my infant life. My name is Marianne Everett, a member of the Scottish Tourist Guide Association, and I'm standing next door to a plaque that commemorates that here Robert Louis Stevenson came to school. I'm standing in the assembly hall of the Edinburgh Academy, which is one of the schools that Robert Louis Stevenson attended as a boy. It still serves as a school, with one of Edinburgh's finest 19th century neoclassical buildings at its heart. It must have been quite daunting for the 11-year-old Stevenson to arrive here as a new boy in 1861. He did show early promise as a writer, but his stay here was interrupted by his bouts of chronic ill health, and he stayed for less than two years. He continued his education with private tuition at home and spells at two other schools, both of them now sadly closed.